situation. Times Square, New York, March 2022. It's messed up. Ukrainians and those who support them are holding anti-war rallies. It's mainly a grassroots movement organized through social media. I met a few members of a small collective that sprouted at the beginning of the war. We're mostly creatives, photographers, designers, artists, um, just uh, gathering to try and do what we can and focusing not only on material donations but also direct mutual aid, micro funds of 150, 200 to uh, people we know and people we know through others who are in dire need. Are you of Ukrainian heritage? Yeah, my, my grandparents were refugees from there. About half the group, maybe more, is from there much more recently. And a lot of us know people there or have some form of connection. Do you still have family there? Uh, some, yes. In, in what part? Mostly the West. Lviv, ivano Frankivsk, uh, Kamenets Podilsky. And I'm from Odessa, and uh, I was born there. And I have a lot of ties to Ukraine and a lot of people who I dearly care about and love. And I'm, I'm ordered to help them directly. And here's how you can help. This is our Instagram account where we're sharing a lot of um, the people we're helping, the efforts we're taking. And this is the uh, direct donation QR code to our Venmo from which we're um, gathering all the funds. And we're keeping records of everywhere it's going, every person it's going to. What is needed concretely? What's needed is mostly medicine, uh, non-perishable foods, and some clothes like that are best for the winter, like heat tech, uh, sort of like heat technology clothes. For links, please see information in the description. At the second rally on Saturday, I met Ukrainian-American photographer Sonia Goidenko. Uh, I have family there, my father is there, uh, his sister, my aunt, is there fighting uh, in Ukraine. She's actually been in the army since 2014, since the first invasion, uh, and uh, she's, she's still there, she's still fighting. Uh, his mother's there, she's very old. Uh, they're in Kiev, uh, they're, they're not leaving, they didn't go to Poland, they're staying there. I'm maintaining contact with him, trying to do it every day through Facebook. They still have internet. My, my mother's picking up stuff to, to donate to, uh, to a place in New Jersey for humanitarian relief. So you can go to her salon. It's called Salon Mirage, uh, 1625 Lemoyne Avenue in Fort Lee, New Jersey. And she will be picking up uh, all kinds of items, non-perishable food, blankets, uh, first aid kits. There's a whole list of things. Um, if you look, at, look for her salon online, Salon Mirage, you can drop things off there and we'll take it next week uh, to the humanitarian relief. What do you think about no-fly zone? I don't know how realistic it is to have a no-fly zone, but I also know the dangers because, first of all, the nuclear... The, the fact the thing that happened yesterday of, you know, like, Ukraine has the largest nuclear, uh, you know, center in, in, in all of Europe. Where, where, where Russia, yes, 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 where Russia was, you know, was bombing and there was a fire there. It's very dangerous, not just for Ukraine, it's dangerous for the whole world if anything happens to that reactor. Can you say a few words to those Russian people who believe that nothing is happening to the civilians and those who support Wake the war? Up. <laughs> Wake up! I know it's a very complicated situation for them because they're getting a lot of propaganda, but there's also ways for them to see the truth, and a lot of them don't want to see it. I've seen videos of, you know, Russian people being shown photographs of people dying in Ukraine, and media, like, real media, Reuters, articles, everything, and they don't want to look at it. They just say, нет, не для нас, мы за Путина, and they just walk away. And for those people who, you know, think that nothing is going on, I mean, wake up. Russian people basically, I believe, they're the ones that can overthrow Putin and they need to get together and need to, need to really protest this. This is, this is realistic in the sense that I, I believe that doing things like this, like banning Russian oil uh, that is here in the U.S., we still literally buy Russian oil. Biden still hasn't stopped that, so we buy 600,000 barrels a day. That's $100 a barrel, so that's $60 million to Russia, to Putin, like daily. So uh, that needs to stop ASAP. Uh, I'm hoping that that happens within a few days. So uh, Ukraine will definitely hold out. And you know, Ukrainian people, I think they've proven to everybody how brave they are. And it's unbelievable. Like, 
I don't know, I don't think anybody, I don't think they themselves even expected it, you know, but then they put, they're in this position and so many of them are staying and so many of them are fighting with everything, with like Molotov cocktails, if they have a bath, they'll throw it. The, you know, you have people, videos of people stopping tanks with their hands, you know, like, I mean, you've seen them, they're, they're wild, they're amazing. And I, th I think if they hold on, if we can keep, keep sending them help, you know, keep sending them weapons, keep sending them things that they, they can defend themselves with. If we can keep doing that, and then, then yes, of course, of course. And I would want to stress the importance of sharing these kind of things and really just, just you know, posting something, going to a protest, talking about it, you know, really showing this kind of solidarity, keeping up with the sanctions, keep pressure on Russia. Russia will not hold on out for too long, you know, like keep, keep the pressure on. And with that, I think if that keeps happening, um, then yes, we will win. Slavo Ukraine. From New York, I'm Jane Graves.